One of the ultimate threats to humanity is another big space rock or catastrophic event for which we, like the dinosaurs, are not prepared. We've done a single experiment to see if we can alter the course of an asteroid through NASA's Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART mission, and it was a success. But that asteroid was small and that may not scale up for a bigger rock. The second biggest threat, and the one we're going to address today, is that we may not be able to leave our planet at all. Ever since the Soviet Union launched the very first artificial satellite way back in 1957, we've put around 14,000 things into orbit. With the launching of so many objects, there's a lot of leftover old spacecrafts and rocket parts, pieces that were released on purpose, fragments from explosions or crashes, and even small paint chips. It seems to be that we may have so polluted orbital space that it will become unsafe to leave the atmosphere. The greatest proliferation of artificial space junk exists in low Earth orbit, which is objects in orbit at less than 2,000 kilometers from Earth. Alex Fielding, CEO of Privateer, a company we'll discuss later in this video, fears there may be an incident involving humans and space junk in the near future, stating, I'm an optimist and I still am very, very, very afraid that we're too late. By leaving so much space junk in orbit, we may have effectively trapped ourselves here, unable to escape the next devastatingly big rock headed our way. If we knew definitively that a 40-kilometer asteroid was going to impact us in 20 years, we could certainly direct efforts to move it aside. If it was made of loose rock, it would mass roughly 50 quadrillion kilograms. That is going to be tough to move. If it was solid rock, it would be double that mass. A metal asteroid? it would mass five times that. Add to this is the fact that there is something called the Kessler Syndrome, in which the amount of junk orbiting Earth reaches a tipping point. It then becomes inevitable that debris will start to impact each other. Each crash will create more and more junk and small bits until virtually all objects in low Earth orbit are destroyed, and launching a vehicle with passengers would become an odds game of who is going to die. If we want to survive as a species long term, we may have to consider getting enough humans off the Earth at some point. This could involve colonizing Mars, the Moon, or building large space cities that exist in free space. The question is, if space junk gets out of control, could we get enough people into space or successfully build these space colonies? What's up there? Currently, there are about 4,800 active satellites, with more being launched all the time. SpaceX alone has around 3,200 Starlink satellites with plans to have 42,000 total. Amazon is also planning a 3,200 satellite constellation, and another startup named Astra is applying for 13,600 satellites. As much as that all is, when we talk about space junk, the numbers get much bigger. Today, there are over 25,000 pieces of debris larger than 10 centimeters zooming around in space. When we look at items between 1 and 10 centimeters in diameter, that number grows to 500,000 particles. And even more mind-blowing is the fact that the number of particles larger than 1 millimeter is over 100 million. The total weight of all this space junk orbiting Earth adds up to a whopping 10,000 metric tons. Out of those numbers, the U.S. Department of Defense's Global Space Surveillance Network tracks about 27,000 individual pieces of space debris. They're not slow. To sustain an orbit, say at the height of the ISS, an object needs to travel at about 17,000 miles per hour. To put that into perspective, a bullet leaving a gun travels at around 1,000 miles per hour, which means your average space junk is traveling 8 to 20 times faster than a bullet. Each lost spacesuit glove, nut or bolt, tool or even flecks of paint bring incipient danger to anything else in orbit because they have so much energy from their speed alone. Some orbits are in a similar direction, but some are going backwards compared to other objects, thereby doubling the kinetic energy if two objects traveling in opposite directions meet. Incidents The International Space Station is the most heavily shielded spacecraft ever put into space to mitigate the damage that occurs when it gets hit with space debris. It's able to withstand debris up to one centimeter in size. For larger debris, the ISS can engage in a debris avoidance maneuver, where it moves to avoid a potential collision. In November 2021, the ISS crew had to take shelter in their transport spacecraft until the risk of a nearby piece of orbital debris passed the ISS. 
Collisions are the biggest source of new space junk as a single incident can create thousands of new pieces of space debris. One such incident was the 2009 collision of the inactive Russian communication satellite Cosmos 2251 and the US-based Iridium-33 satellite. This was the first ever collision of two satellites and produced nearly 2,000 pieces of space junk over 10 centimeters in size and many more thousands of smaller pieces. Since this event, the US military now provides daily screenings of close approaches and warns satellite operators of any potential collisions. The worst incident was the intentional destruction of the Feng Yun weather satellite by China in 2007. China launched a ballistic missile to destroy the satellite in an anti-satellite missile test. This event created more than 3,000 pieces of tracked space debris and more than 30,000 estimated untracked pieces. At the speed the collision occurred, around 20,000 miles per hour, the objects behave like liquids and pass through each other and a cloud of debris just continues on their original orbit path. The debris from this impact have spread from an altitude of 175 kilometers all the way to 3,600 kilometers above the Earth. Fixing the problem Debris left orbiting below 600 kilometers normally fall back to Earth within several years. In the last 50 years, an average of one piece of space debris fell to Earth every day. At 800 kilometers, space debris will orbit for centuries. Beyond 1,000 kilometers, space junk will stay orbiting the Earth for thousands of years, so the problem is not going to take care of itself. Going out to collect space junk could be a way to save immense launch costs while obtaining highly refined metals and even technology that could be reused. Whatever happens in the future, right now all launches need to have a deorbiting plan for used, expended or broken equipment to keep the clutter from getting worse. Previously, satellite operators had 25 years to dispose of their unused satellites. Now the FCC in the US requires satellite operators to dispose of defunct satellites within 5 years. Clean up missions. Privateer. On the information intelligence side, Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple, created a company called Privateer, which aims to be the Google Maps or Zillow of space. Their app, Wayfinder, catalogs and visualizes thousands of objects in orbit around Earth, including satellites and space debris. This critical information can form the basis of future cleanup missions either by Privateer or other companies. Remove Debris Launched in 2018, Remove Debris was a test mission to try different methods of debris removal. Instead of removing actual space junk, the mission used mock targets. The experiment tested two methods of capturing space junk, one using a net and the other a tethered harpoon. Clear Space One The European Space Agency contacted Swiss startup ClearSpace to launch a mission attempting to remove actual space debris. Announced in 2019 and planned to launch in 2025, the mission intends to go after a piece of debris known as Vespa, which was left in space by a Vega rocket back in 2013. ClearSpace One will use robotic arms to capture the debris and then re-enter the Earth's atmosphere in a controlled manner. Astroscale In March 2021, Astroscale launched a test mission known as LCD. In order to test their capture technology, the mission created its own model of a piece of space trash. Unfortunately, the test was stopped early by Astroscale in May due to some complications. However, the company is planning a new mission, the ELSA-M Servicer, for the end of 2024. The ELSA-M Servicer is designed to be able to remove multiple satellites in a single mission. ELSA-M will collect satellites one by one and push them into the Earth's atmosphere to burn up before continuing on to collect the next satellite. Why haven't we done serious cleanup yet? People will always find something to complain about, especially where politics are involved. Debris cleanup of dead satellites could just as easily remove functional satellites of political rivals or commercial competitors. The public is going to ask, who is paying for this? Programs like this can be extremely costly. Some of the procrastination has been blamed on financial reluctance, some on hoping another country will do something first. Whatever happens, if we discover that a big asteroid is headed our way, we should already have a plan in place and not have to scramble to save the entire human race. Tell us what you think about space junk in the comments below, and let us know if you have any suggestions or feedback for us. We appreciate your input.
Thanks for watching and take a moment to check out this next video which you might find intriguing.